Imagine working on a software project and suddenly, everything goes awry. Changes are happening left, right and center, and you're lost in a sea of code. That's where version control steps in. Picture this. You're working on a software project. Maybe it's your first, maybe it's your 50th. But either way, you're knee-deep in code. You're making changes, your team is making changes, and before you know it, you're trying to navigate an ocean of modifications with no compass. It's overwhelming, it's messy, and it's downright confusing. Enter version control. This is your lifeline, your lifesaver, your lighthouse in the storm of coding chaos. Essentially, version control is a system that records changes to a file or set of files over time so that you can recall specific versions later. It's like a time machine for your project, allowing you to explore the past versions of your work and even revert to them if necessary. So, are you ready to dive into this life-saving concept of version control? Hold on to your hats, because we're about to demystify version control. Now that we've set the stage, let's talk about the types of version control systems. There are two main types, centralized and distributed. Centralized version control systems, or CVCS, work on a single central repository. All changes and versions are stored in this one place and everyone works directly with this repository. On the other hand, distributed version control systems, or DVCS, are a bit more dynamic. Each user has their own complete copy of the entire project, including all versions and changes. This means if the central server goes down in a DVCS, any of the user repositories can be copied back up to the server to restore it. The key difference lies in the repository setup. In CVCS, there's only one. In DVCS, there are many. Each system has its merits, but for this video, we'll focus on distributed version control, specifically Git. But why bother with version control? What's in it for you? Well, let's spill the beans. Firstly, version control is your ultimate collaborator. It allows multiple people to work on a project simultaneously without stepping on each other's toes. Imagine a symphony orchestra where every musician plays their part flawlessly without disrupting their neighbors. That's what version control does for your code. Secondly, version control is a time machine. It tracks every change made by whom and when. So, if things go haywire, you can always travel back in time to a version where everything was hunky-dory. Lastly, think of version control as your safety net. It provides a backup of your code, ensuring that if your computer decides to take an unexpected vacation, your hard work isn't lost. So, version control is like a superhero, saving your code from chaos and confusion. Now, meet Git, a popular version control tool. Git is the go-to tool for many developers when it comes to version control. Why, you ask? Well, its popularity stems from its powerful features, flexibility, and robust performance. Git is a distributed version control system. This means every developer working on a project has a complete copy of the code base on their local machine. This allows for faster operations, offline access, and individualized workspaces. The beauty of Git lies in its simplicity. It makes tracking changes, comparing different versions, and merging code from different branches a breeze. And here's the kicker. Git is designed to handle everything from small to very large projects with speed and efficiency. Whether you're a solo developer working on a passion project or part of a team coding the next big thing, Git is your reliable companion. With Git, managing your code becomes a piece of cake. Ready to get your hands dirty with Git? Let's start by installing Git. You can download it from the official Git website. Once downloaded, follow the on-screen instructions to complete the installation process. Now, let's set up your first repository. Navigate to the directory where you want your project to live and run the command git in it. This will create a new git repository in that directory. Now let's make your first commit. But first create a file. You can use any text editor for this. Once you've created and saved your file, you need to add it to the staging area. Do this by typing git add file name. After your file is staged, it's time to commit. Enter git commit m your message here. The message should describe what you've changed. And there you have it. You've just created a new file, staged it, and made your first commit. Congratulations, you've just made your first commit. Let's add some more tools to your Git toolbox. First up, commit. Think of it as a snapshot of your project at a particular point in time. It's a way to save your progress, like a save point in a video game. Next we have push. This command sends your committed changes to a remote repository. It's like uploading your saved game for others to see and use. Now pull. This is the reverse of push. It fetches changes from a remote repository and merges them into your current branch. 
It's as if you're downloading the latest updates to your game. Finally, branching. This allows you to create a separate line of development. Imagine playing a game where you can explore different paths without affecting the main storyline. With these commands, you're well on your way to mastering Git. Branching and merging sound complicated? Don't worry, we've got this. In the world of version control, branching is like creating a new sandbox where you can play around, test ideas, and build new features without disturbing the main code base. Think of it as a safe zone where you can experiment freely. Now imagine you've created a groundbreaking feature in your branch, and you want to incorporate it into the main code base. This is where merging comes in. Merging is the act of integrating the changes from your branch back into the main code base, making your improvements accessible to everyone. So, how does it work? In a nutshell, you'll first create a branch, make your changes, and then merge those changes back into the main branch. It's a cycle that keeps your main code base clean and your development process organized. And just like that, you've learned to branch and merge. Conflicts. They're not just for soap operas. They can happen in code too. When multiple developers are working on the same code base, their changes can sometimes clash, leading to a conflict. This is where our version control system, Git, comes into play. Imagine two developers, Alice and Bob, both working on the same project. Alice makes changes to a file, commits, and pushes her changes. Meanwhile, Bob is also making changes to the same file. When Bob tries to push his changes, Git stops him. Why? Because Alice's changes were first, and Git doesn't want to overwrite them with Bob's without a clear directive. To resolve this, Bob needs to pull Alice's changes first. Git will then try to merge these changes. If Git can't automatically merge the changes, it flags a conflict. The developers must then manually resolve the conflict, deciding which changes to keep. Once the conflict is resolved, Bob can commit and push his changes again. Conflict resolved. Now you can handle any coding drama that comes your way. Now that you've had a taste of version control, you're ready to take on the world, or at least your next coding project. Think back on what we've covered. Version control is not just a tool, it's a lifeline for your code. It's like a time machine allowing you to travel back to any point in your project's history to see what changes were made, who made them, and why. It enables you to track, manage, and control changes in your code base, making collaboration seamless and efficient. We've explored the two main types of version control systems, centralized and distributed. Each has its strengths and weaknesses, but remember the choice between them largely depends on your project's needs and your team's workflow. We've also delved into the world of Git, one of the most popular version control systems out there. We've touched on the basics, from setting up a repository and making initial commits, to understanding important commands like commit, push, pull, and branching. We've seen how branching allows for parallel development, and how merging integrates changes back into the main code base. But the journey doesn't end here. There are numerous hosting platforms like GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket that provide the ideal environment for your version-controlled projects. They offer a range of collaboration features from code reviews to bug tracking, making them invaluable tools in any developer's toolkit. Remember, every journey begins with a single step. The first step in your version control journey is to start using it in your projects. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. That's how we learn. Embrace the process and over time you'll become proficient and wonder how you ever coded without it. As you venture forth, keep in mind the best practices we've discussed. Be diligent in your commit messages, strategic in your branching and thorough in your code reviews. These habits will not only make your life easier but also enhance the quality of your code and the efficiency of your team. So, go forth and conquer your code with version control. You've got this.